So George Mumford is a psychologist, elite performance expert, and author of The Groundbreaking, The Mindful Athlete, and also author of the latest book he has out, Unlocked, Embrace Your Greatness, Find the Flow, Discover Success. He's worked with athletes like Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant. He has also consulted with high school, college, and Olympic athletes, inmates, and corporate executives. And he is a sought after public speaker at both business and athletic conferences, nationally and internationally. And George is joining us from Massachusetts. George, how are you doing today? Thank you so much um, for being here. Ah, uh, it's my pleasure. I'm so excited to be here. And any program with love in it is 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 all about. That's what it's about. All you need is love. So we're actually loved is. You know, why would I not be here? I'm supposed to be here. <laughs> mm. And I'm excited and I feel uh, honored to be here and to be uh, sharing this space with you and your audience. Thank you. We're so honored. I, I'm so excited. <laughs> so I was mentioning before we hit record that I have the pleasure of hosting for everyone that knows my voice. This is Tessa. And for those of you who are tuning in and, and listening to me for the first time, welcome. Thank you so much. And George, I can, I just, I honestly, I'm just a little bit nervous to speak with you today. I feel like I'm standing in the, sitting in the presence of greatness. And, uh, I have so many questions for you. Um, and I guess I kind of wanted to start off because I feel so inspired by the work that you do. And also because I just got to watch air the new movie <laughs> about the uh -huh. Air Jordan. And uh -huh. so, and I know you've had the opportunity to work with Michael Jordan. And um, I think I'm curious to start off with talking about this idea of success, as we call it. And you, you discussed this in your book, you know, kind of like yes. that American myth. What does success mean? How does one get there to achieve greatness? I always think about that, um, the 10,000 hour kind of Yes. Awesome. Yes. yes. I'm curious to hear your thoughts on this. And that's a big scope topic, but yes. So I've been, I've had the honor. I, one of the things I've, I've done is I read about a book a week. I've, I've averaged over a book a week for the last 38, almost 39 years. Even before that, I was reading, but not at, at that clip. But success to me is, and the definition I have of success is the one I borrowed from Earl Nightingale. He wrote a book called The Strangest Secret. And, and, and the same, you know what The Strangest Secret is? No, tell me become what we think about <laughs> we become what we think about we yeah. become what we think about so um he says success is a progressive realization mm -hmm. of a worthy goal or worthy ideal so it's not this idea that okay i'm gonna win a championship and i'm when i win the championship i'll be happy no you're a champion first you're happy first before you win a championship and so each day as long as you're moving in the right direction you're being successful because you you have an intention and you are achieving it, so success also you know so there's success that that's out here and everybody rewards you. But the success I'm really talking about is the success that's in here that's reflected out there. That's a you know you meet with your mirror. So success to me is just being being able to do something, being able to achieve something for the you know that's not just about you, but you can share it with others. So it's, it's one thing to have to be successful. I mean, we have these quiet victories, like they talk about these quiet moments of desperation that a lot of us have inside. This is about succeeding by actually expressing ourselves fully and honestly. To me, you're successful. I'm successful when I'm a, be I'm a little bit better today than I was yesterday. And I'm competing against my previous best self. But what am I doing? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to express myself but in a way where I'm sharing what I'm getting with others. So it's for the highest good, for the greatest good. It's not like for my ego. It's more for, for something that's for all of us. And you talked about being around greatness. We're always around greatness. And guess where that greatness is? Inside. What happens when we see greatness out there is somebody's ability to successfully express the greatness within. And so that's why we love sports. We love seeing that because there's something about that that we vicariously uh, experience because it's what 
possible for us. We have that same potentiality inside of us. And so for me, success is, is being able to be yourself and to be and to be able to express yourself in a way that is that is harmonizing, that is a gift to the world. Yeah. Is that, does that make sense? So I, I, I know I'm speaking lofty, but this is lofty stuff that we're talking about because it's taken me a long time to unlock or at least embrace some part of my greatness within. And we all have it. I call it a masterpiece or a divine spark. But this, we have this greatness. And so when you said your greatness and you see it with MJ or Kobe, I'm here to tell you that you've been around greatness all your life. And it's not just out here, it's in here. But if we don't acknowledge, acknowledge it, if we don't look inside, we're not going to discover it. We're not going to be able to unlock it. So we're around greatness, but we know what it looks like. But it 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 all, if you think about it, it's because that person that is expressing greatness is, is expressing themselves honestly. You know, Bruce Lee said martial arts, it's to honestly express yourself. So you have an intention and, you, and you're able to achieve that in, intention but you're achieving it in your own unique way it, but it it shows up and greatness looks like greatness but each one of us has that potentiality and when we can express it and share it with others it's a wonderful thing yeah well so how do you think you get to that place i mean so i mentioned being nervous and i think about yes. this often as it relates to um, the person who gets to that place of greatness like michael jordan yeah. like kobe yeah. bryant um, and I think about, you know, I kind of compare myself to that in terms of like, okay, well, I get on a stage like this platform and speak to someone like you and I feel my nerves kind of kick in. So do you, in your experience working with these um, high level athletes, do they get nervous too yes. you know, in those games? What do they do with yes. that? Well, what's the, what, is, what is the nervousness? The nervousness is, it's an expression of your desire to experience something and it's special so i'll talk about the gentleman who's um who the mvp of the nba finals is named after bill russell boston celtics so obviously i grew up in boston and so i watched him play his whole career and the thing about what people don't know russell used to get bill russell used to get so anxious before a game, he would throw up. So it's not the anxiety or the nervousness. The nervousness could be excitation. It's our relationship to it, our ability to say, yes, I'm nervous or I'm, I'm anxious. And I, all I have to do is just make the next play and I'm going to do what I said I'm going to do, what I intend to do, regardless of how I feel. And you know, you might not know this, but in sports, this, we're very ritualistic when we're playing the sport. And so uh, Bill, uh, Bill Russell was it was before a game and Red Auerbach was his coach. And Red Auerbach said, hey, Bill, have you thrown up yet? And he said, no. He says, go in the locker room and don't come up until you throw up. <laughs> you know? So so it's that kind of thing. So, But here's the challenge. When we get close to possibility or freedom or potentiality, one side of that coin is potential freedom. The other side is the uncertainty. It's the anxiety. So when we're getting close to something we want and we're close to it, it's like we feel this, this anxiety or this energy, this excitation. And so being able to experience it, whether it's fear or excitation, if we can just allow it to be there and do what we need to do in spite of that, we'll realize that it gets easier and easier or you get to the point where you just made the commitment to do it and let's remember that courage wouldn't be courage if there wasn't something to be courageous about, if it wasn't something to overcome or to move through. So courage is, is of the heart. So opening in the heart and being vulnerable and being willing to say, yes, I'm doing this and I'm not going to back down. So so you get what I'm saying? So it's just, so it's love, really. It's all you need is love. Is, is the love of, of, for me, is the love of learning and a love of people and being on a joyful journey and just realizing that when I learn things and I achieve things, it generates a energizing enthusiasm. Mm, I love that. That's really exciting. So you're enthusiastic about this encounter because there's a part of you that feels like 
maybe you can't name it this way, but I'll share it this way. There's a part of you inside that says, yeah, I need that. I want that. And I want to feel that. And so we all have it. Now, whether or not we're willing to be vulnerable enough to say, yes, I really want that. Because being vulnerable means you might want it. You may not get it. And we don't want to experience that disappointment or the fact that even if we do experience it, it's not going to last long. Mm -hmm. It's it's not everlasting. It's it's going to be temporal. It's going to be for a moment and then something else happens or maybe it's a period of time. So we ch that challenges us from moment to moment that we know as happy as we're feeling or excited as we are, it's going to change. And so there's all of that in there. But if we can just manage the moment and just for 10 seconds, I remember that movie with Matt Damon uh, about the zoo. And he, he said, just need to be brave for 10 seconds. I said, just, just, just be brave and just move through it. And when you move through it and you get to the other side, you're actually developing some resilience. You're actually realizing that, oh, it didn't kill me. I can do this. And maybe it's a, maybe anxiety is, is teaching me something about I'm close to my edge. Um, I'm out of my comfort zone and it's okay. I love that. Oh, I love that so much. So, okay. So this has me thinking about a, a quote you included in the book by Maya Angelou. And you're talking about, um, uh, I should have written it down. It's at the beginning of the book and it's how the, the, I think it's like success or your purpose in life comes when it starts to become automatic. Yes. Yes. Yes, so the quote is, our divine potential is most effective when it starts to become automatic, when it becomes unconscious or subconscious. When this happens, people do exactly what they know to do, not what they think they know, not what they should know, not what other people say they know. As the Chinese, you know, dot, 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 as the Chinese say, to know and not to do in fact, no, to know and not to do is, in fact, not to know. Mm -hmm. So you're absolutely right. So it's this idea of embracing our greatness and making it a habit of embracing it and recognizing it in other people so it becomes automatic. And then when it becomes automatic, it's just a way of being. So you're just, you're just doing it, but you, you program yourself. And we know things. And it's really challenging. And this is performance. You know something or you intend something, but can you actually act it out? Can you actually bring it to act, to activity? Yeah. So we know what to do. We say, yeah, I know that. But if you know it and you're not doing it, you don't really know it. <laughs> so it's about knowing and doing. So that's a commitment. That's, that's a performance. That's an effort, making that effort to bring into existence what you intend to achieve. And so what would, for the person, you know, who has this idea, wants to start this new habit or behavior, wants to achieve this, whatever it is, you know, start a new business, um, start a podcast, you know, make it to the Olympic level athletes in some sort of something. Is there some sort of daily kind of habit, behavior, ritualistic? I mean, you mentioned ritual is really important in terms yes. of athleticism. Yes. What would so you say? Every day is remind yourself that you're a masterpiece, that you have the greatness within you. And so, and sometimes it's helpful to, to, to recognize others who express that, either in writing or, or, or listening or whatever, but to feed out, to, to stay at positive, to realize that I have everything I need to succeed. It's an inside job. And I can begin now just by being able to observe my experience because I have this ability to step back and observe my experience. So we have to become responsible and realize that that I am responsible for how I am perceiving things. And so it's 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 for me, it was accepting the, res the responsibility that I am responsible and I make choices. And how do I program myself or train my mind and body? in a way where I can make wise choices, where I can get be res less reactive to life, where there's no space between stimulus and response and create space. So in that space, I get the freedom and power to choose who I, what I want to do and who I need to be to do what I want to do. So it begins now with just 
internally reflecting on experience, taking responsibility and realize that I have self-awareness, which allows me to self-regulate. So self-regulate means I can choose what thoughts, feelings, and behaviors that I experience and I focus on. Now, because we are not, because we're not exercising the internal locus of control, the inside game, which says that no, I get to choose what I want to think about, what I want to direct my attention towards. And so it's taking that personal responsibility, but it has to be housed in this ability, this awareness that there's greatness within me. I'm wired for success. I have this ability to step back and observe my experience uncritically so I can start to understand how things work, how I work, and keep changing what I'm doing to I can do what I want to do. So it's the self-awareness and it's the self-regulation that gets to the self-mastery, gets to the self of being able to have, yeah, to have self-mastery and self-control. And so we have to understand that. It's like this goes back to the marshmallow test they used to give. Well, I don't know if they still do it, but it's a longitudinal study of they would get, uh, I guess, first grade kindergarten. And they would say to the young folks, you can you can have this marshmallow now, or you can wait, and then we'll give you two marshmallows in the future. So that that's uh, that's impulse control or delay in gratification. So that's what it comes down to. How do we learn to say no to the wrong to the right things and yes to the uh, no to the wrong things and yes to the right things? And so that begins when we start to understand that we have this ability to choose on our own and that we can train the mind to be able to see clearly so that, as they say, know the truth and the truth shall set you free. So to know which way is true north and accept it and then to thine own self be true. How do I really feel about things? Who am I inside? Am I willing to listen and, and to listen to my heart and get to the point where I get to understand who I am? You know, the self, self-love is has a lot to do with self care and self-responsibility and self-respect, respecting us all how we are, but we have to know. We have to know who we are. We have to seek to understand. So if we know how we are, then we know how to care for ourselves, how to respond to our needs, uh, whether we can see them or needs that we don't have, but we have we have a network of relationships. We have a community. We have loved ones that can see our blind spots and help us address those needs that we don't even know we have, and that would be somebody else loving and, and care of responding to our needs, spoken or unspoken, but then the respect, who am I? How, how do I know when I'm really being myself, when I'm being true to myself and not doing what somebody else wants me to do or feeling pressure from society and whatnot? And of course, there's some things we 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 want to be in society, so we say, okay, we're going to do this because we want to be in a community or we want to you know, there's rules that we agreed to abide by, but that is different. But ultimately it comes down to each one of us knowing that taking responsibility, it's like um, William James, it's one of his conversations where he said there was this idea whether there's such a thing as free will. Mm -hmm. And he said, I'm gonna make the choice that there is free will. Mm -hmm. On this moment, on, I'm gonna make a choice. So. Volitional effort is the effort of attention. So once we, if we decide we have free will, then we'll have free will, we'll exercise it. Now there's going to be conditioning and places where we're programmed, where we do automatic and we have the, the habit patterns. This is why the, the self, you know, self-reflection, really thinking about what habits we have that are helpful and what habits are not. It's not good or bad. It's helpful or not helpful, wholesome or not wholesome. So we're not judging, but we're just noticing. And so we start to see, oh, like Gandhi said, our beliefs become our thoughts. Our thoughts become our words. Our words become our actions. Our actions become our habits. Our habits become our values. Our values become our destiny. So if we know that, that's an equation. So if we start off with the belief, so we have to believe like we have free will. We have to believe that we have a masterpiece, that we have greatness within, and that we can unlock and that we're worthy of being unlocked. And so then we start from there, and then, well, the book talks about some suggestions on how to do that, but the first step is to realize that I am responsible, no blame. 
And even though things happen to me, I don't have control over, I can choose my reaction or my response. I can choose to interpret what it means and why not in, interpret it in a way that empowers me, inspires me, um, motivates me to allow my greatness to meet the challenge. So to the degree that we have suffering or there's pain, Joseph Campbell said our life is where our pain is. So if we, only way out is always through. And that inquiry and that investigation and that moving through, we actually allow our latent abilities to manifest. So for me, it was substance abuse and chronic pain. So without that, I my my masterpiece, I wouldn't even know I had a masterpiece or that I could express it or that I can unlock, that I actually have more freedom to choose. Do you believe that you had to hit that? You you have a whole section dedicated to hitting bottom in the book um, where you, you do go into detail about the substance abuse. And I'm curious, I'm always curious to hear if you think and in terms of like all the people that you've worked with and in your own personal experience, do each of us have to hit our own personal rock bottom to be able to go through that pain to understand what we're made of and to be able to, you know, climb back up out of the ashes? And I understand it's on a continuum and it's not like one time and then we're done. Yes. For me, I had, I, I talk about it in my mindful athlete book. I had the AOF method of motivation. And you have any idea what AOF might mean? I'm trying to see if I can make a guess. A -O -F. Okay, well, you, well you're well, you sitting on it. <laughs> <laughs> Ass on fire. Okay. okay. There has to be a sense of urgency, okay? Mm -hmm. So that urgency could be because you're in crisis and, and it motivates you to, to express your latent abilities, or it could be your committed to pursuing excellence. So now it's not my AOF method that's motivating me. What's motivating me is my pursuing excellence and wisdom with grace and ease. Mm -hmm. So it's the, uh, the, there's a hunger and a thirst that I'm, that I'm feeding by just seeking that. I'm a seeker. I want to know, uh, you know, I'm, a, I'm seeking. So there has to be some sense of urgency that, that breaks us away from uh, the status quo or the comfort level where we're just okay, we're just chilling. And you know, this goes to the neural science uh, where you know, once we get grooved, uh, then the nerves stop firing. So you have to bring more complexity to it or, 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 or add to it. So if you're not struggling, if you're not getting out of your comfort zone, you're not learning. And so for some of us, we get to the point where we get comfortable being comfortable. And this really, this process of Unlocking has a lot to do with getting comfortable with being uncomfortable. Okay. Yeah, that's helpful. So is this the idea of neuroplasticity that, you know, to create new neurologic pathways, you have to yes. do things differently. You have to create a new groove. Yes. Well, let's be real about this. Neuroplasticity works both ways, negatively and positively. Mm -hmm. So we have to understand, once again, what are we paying attention to? what habits are we developing and and so and grooving and, and that sort of thing so it's really important to understand for me the most important thing is to be in love not to be in to be in growth mode or love mode not to be in uh fight flight or flee mode where it's survival mode because where you're on our heels you can't be in survival mode and growth mode at the same time on a cellular level so we're always talking about how do we get out of survival and into growth how do we get out of fear and into love or being open or being vulnerable to new experiences and seeing things differently? So, yes. So, but there has to be a reason. There has to be something, some, some sense of urgency or some sense of understanding as uh, Soren Kierkegaard talks about this idea, talked about this idea of the, the most devastating form of despair is not being ourselves. So the opposite health is being ourselves and being true to ourselves and sharing ourselves. Then, then once we understand that and then we say, okay, so I'm interested in that. So once desire is what starts it, and I know some people say desire is negative, 
But without the thirst and hunger, <laughs> you don't get there. Without the this idea that for me, when I got clean, I didn't even know I had this desire to be in, intellectually stimulated. But when I'm doing all the stuff out here and I'm not paying attention to what's in here, once I stop paying attention to what's in here and it says, hey, no, we, we want to study, we want to learn. So I thought I was um, needed to be intellectually stimulated until I really came to the realization that what I really want is I want to pursue excellence and wisdom with grace and ease. The grace and ease came later, but I, I was pursuing excellence and wisdom. I want to know how things work. How did I get clean? How did I manage my chronic pain in a way where it brought me to more peace and more love and, and more openness versus uh, the opposite, which is shutting down, being disabled, and then moving towards death or disability. This understanding that, yeah, no, there's there's a way of being, there's a way of relating to experience where you can transform roadblocks into stepping stones. And that's been my experience. And when you do that, you're unlocked. So it's not like you're unlocked and you do it, uh, the unlocking is a result of doing it. It's about doing the work. And so you can unlock a little bit, but just like the light switch, the dimmer switch, you know, how far up you want to go, you can go, but you can go all the way up and let it all out, or you just let a little bit out. But that moving that dimmer switch, that's the process I talk about in the book, how to unlock, how to embrace your greatness, find the flow and discover success. And so when you unlock even a little bit, you start to, you, you start to embrace your 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 uniqueness, your ability, your wide for success, your wide for um, being able to manage whatever comes in front of you. That you can you can figure it out. You can figure it out. Sometimes figuring it out is it is the way it is, and you just make peace with it and you move on. Mm -hmm. But we have this ability, so we have to be able to start off with the original blessing. You might say. That yeah, we can, you know, we we are wired for success instead of talking about this pathology that we're really good at, but focusing on what we want, what we can create, the possibility of being able to express yourself honestly, sincerely. And we love that when somebody's sincere, when somebody's insincere or inauthentic, we have a meter for that. And we just say, oh, we don't want any parts of that. Well, what do you think about the idea of faking it till you make it in terms of uh -huh. Yeah. Yes. So it's interesting because the words matter. Uh -huh. So if you say, don't think of the pink elephant, you think of the pink elephant. So don't, don't get there. So if you're saying fake it till you make it, the fake it is not real. So you fake it till you make it is saying that even when you make it, you don't believe you, you, you made it. And if you don't believe you made it, you won't act like you made it. So it's more like act as if versus fake it till you make it because if you fake it you not may not make it you won't make it and if you make it you won't believe it mm -hmm. and so it's like it's, it's not real it's fake so words matter and how we think see things so put it in the affirmative and focus on what we want versus focusing on well i gotta fake it because i can't make it or i gotta cheat because i can't win honestly i have to do things that 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 are acknowledging my my weakness or my fear rather than saying no maybe the idea is to, to be fully expressive and if you win what the result you can't control but by doing the best you can being better today than you were yesterday that's a winner but we have a winner is somebody who gets to the gets to the goal regardless of how they got there this is about getting to the goal in the right way and even if you don't achieve in that domain, that that attitude, that energy is going to help you in some other aspect of your life. Do you think that there are some central characteristics or even central habits and behaviors that you've seen across the board with that with the people that you've worked with that create that Ability to discern, ability to believe in themselves, ability to have the courage in the face of being scared. Yes, it's it's called, <laughs> we talk about it like reset, renew, reboot. So I have an iPhone and every once in a while it'll get jammed. And all I have to do is just turn it off and turn it back on. Mm. And it's fixed. I know people have had that experience. 
it's 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 so it's like how many times have you misplaced something i'm talking to all of us have this experience i believe i misplaced something and i and the more i try to find it i can't find it but as soon as i stop looking for it i find it that's that's kind of like being unlocked that's that's kind of like understanding that um that it, it's about just just you you just gotta you gotta say yes to whatever comes up embrace it generate the hope and then figure out what the lesson is what do we have to learn what what's this telling me so i don't know if i answered your your question um well i really like the i'm always looking for like little i guess hacks to remember okay when i'm in this situation yes when i'm yes. feeling stuck you know yeah. when i'm feeling locked yeah whatever what i've you... been done habitually in the past maybe hasn't worked so what right. can i do the next time i catch myself in that moment of yeah. feeling that way yeah go back to basic fundamentals the basic fundamentals the basic principles the essentials begin again and you go back to that. So I've had uh, people I've worked with that had the yips, or like say, if they're a pitcher, you know, we had we had a pitcher, Red Sox, that was supposed to be a phenom, and he was when he was throwing to the plate, it was going up, it was going halfway up the screen, you know, and he couldn't stop doing it. Or somebody would try to throw, uh, Chuck Knobloch, I think, had it for, for a little bit. You know, you you know, like I had a catcher that couldn't throw the first base, I mean, the second base. Right. I mean, you, it goes way, you know, it just, you know, it's just the more you try not to do the thing where the ball is out of control, the more you do it. So how I help people get through that is getting them back to basic fundamentals, reset, reboot, renew, do it again. And the fresh, you know, so you got to go back to the basic fundamentals, plan your feet, whatever the fundamentals are, and that will help you get un, un, unhooked or unlocked. And, that's why when you have people who have a kind of a, a awkward way of doing it, like say they their 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 way of acting is not is not based on the fundamentals. It's it's more challenging to change because they they don't have a baseline. They don't have a fundamentals. So it's always about if you set we we knew just like I like I said with the, if you're struggling or you're frustrated or you don't know you step back. And you part just like when you stop looking for something, you find it because there's some space that gets created when you let go. That uh, that allows you to see what's there. So it's it's really about understanding that basic fundamentals is what to do. Start over again your approach. But I would say your mindset is really important because if if you're in love, if you're in a positive mindset, then your cognitive functioning is enhanced. Now you're seeing the bigger picture. So sometimes we get get lost in this mistake we're having. Instead of saying, yeah, we're making a mistake, but we learn from our mistakes. It's an opportunity. And so when you can really figure that out and struggle through those mistakes, what will happen is you start to detect. We have this pattern detector. It's unconscious. We learn better unconsciously when we're not trying to learn. We're just letting things speak to us in its own language. And we're just being silent. And then there's a knowing, a wisdom, and a creativity that comes out of that that allows us to see things. That's why it's really important to be able to see things in new and fresh ways. The idea is that, you know, as T.S. Eliot talked about in his play, you know, you 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 don't cease exploration. And then you come to the place that you've been all along and you see it in new ways. You get to see it for the first time. I, I've had that experience getting out of the detox, and now I can see my my not only my house, but I'm seeing reality in reality's terms rather than projecting what I think I'm seeing, but actually letting things speak to me in its own language. And in that way, I'm able to see clearly. And when you see clearly, you can behave clearly, and you have more confidence and stuff. So yeah, it's the simplicity of just being in the moment and seeing things clearly and being in the moment because that's the only time we have is now so it's like just fully being in the moment and when there's a hindrance like fear or uh restlessness or doubt that uh, that, that uh, arises 
we have to understand that that prevents us from seeing clearly and it prevents us from being in the moment. So all we have to do is, it's not challenging, but the idea is to be in the moment, to see things in, as they are right now, because things are always changing. And if we can see it from this perspective of, you know, how do I do this? Instead of why can't I do it? It's, it changes everything. But coming from that vulnerability, from that space and letting things speak to us, and that stillness, be still and know there's that that creativity, that wisdom that arises as a result of just seeing. Like Yogi Berra said, you can see a lot just by observing. <laughs> that's that's it. It's a crazy thing. His crazy, his crazy wisdom. When you get to the fork in the road, take it. No, that is it's funny. We laugh at it, but that's what it is. You okay, you take the left fork, it doesn't work, you come back, then you go right. What's the problem? Yeah, but we make it a problem when we act like we should know before we know instead of realizing no, it's failure. Success is ninety nine percent failure. You fail, you fail, you fail. But the challenge is, as as um, Winston Churchill said, he said, success is going from failure to failure to failure without losing enthusiasm. Mm. And if you watch a baby walk, you notice that they don't lose enthusiasm. They keep getting up and falling down, and they're excited about it. That's the kind of attitude, that sense of wonder, that innocence that we need, we can use to be in that space where we start to see things in new and fresh ways, but we don't do it because it's uncomfortable. We want to know, we want permanence, but things are impermanent. We want security, but there is no security. The security is in insecurity. There's acknowledging that things are uncertain. And if you acknowledge that and do the best you can, then you're not trying to make things be different than what they are. Because that's really how we suffer is we we don't know that things that are happening are happening because the conditions are right and for them to happen, where did they happen? So it's the nature of the thing. It's the nature of the situation. And then once we see it as nature, then we can just notice it and then start to understand what is the nature. So when we know the nature, then we can know how to avoid it or how to blend with it. That makes any sense. It It totally does. I love this. I think I have a, uh, well, I'm trying to narrow it down to maybe two to three more questions. And um, I, I'd like to hear your perspective about, have you worked with youth, you know, adolescent yes. age people? Um, I'm curious to hear what your experience is with that as it relates to, well, what your opinion is on this generation of adolescents and teenagers because when I look out and I see, and this might just be like a judgment or, you know, an ego, or I don't know what it is if you experience it too, but I feel like I see this kind of level of apathy or um, this mm -hmm. generation seems maybe a little bit lost or, or mm -hmm. unmotivated. And, you know, and as it relates to me having, you know, nieces and nephews that I want to inspire to mm -hmm. go out and be productive purposeful, happy people, what do you say when you're working with that? Yes, I've, well, I've worked a lot with youth and I have an online program for youth, a mindful athlete program on, you know, online for youth that, uh, you know, we did a couple of beta tests and, but I've been working with youth the whole time is meeting them where they are and then teaching them what, what we're talking about, teaching them that, that there's a lawfulness. See, there's no grounding and it's even more challenging now because people are interpreting what reality is instead of accepting that there's two north. People are saying, well, two north is really west. And so it's very unsettling, you know. Okay, so okay, so we scored more points in the game, but we didn't win because they refused to lose. That's very unsettling. And so what they're looking for is, is a true north, but to me, regardless of who I'm working with, I have to meet them where they are, but start to ground them in the reality that they have this masterpiece. They have this ability to be self-aware, to self-regulate, and to have self-mastery. So to teach them and to help them understand that there's so much chaos, and part of that is the acceleration of you know the global, global economy, technological change, and climate change. As Thomas Friedman talked in his book, Thanks for Being Late, I think it is one of those books. It's everything is moving at an accelerated rate. 
So we have to slow down. Everything's Instagram, everything's coming at you. There's so much data coming at, at us that we have to be able to step back and be able to regulate what we let in and that things are not instantaneous, that that things can happen quickly, but you have to do the, the legwork and it takes time. It's like you you is going to the farm. If you, if you plant a seed, which is very interesting, when you plant it, you got to nurture it and you don't know it's going to grow in its own own pace or whatever. But if it has good soil and it gets water and sunlight, then it's probably going to be okay. But it's going to grow at its own rate. And the interesting thing is that one seed creates thousands of other seeds. And so that's that's the way we have to understand that some things we get, see the benefit right away, but a lot of things is 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 you gotta have that progressive realization of a worthy ideal or goal. It's it's step by step. You do it. You did your job. Now you gotta let the plant grow. And so if we think we gotta dig it up or we have to make it grow to be uh, you know, elite or you know, accepted, that's very different. So there's this learning patience is really important, learning uh discipline, learning the claim gratification, and just doing what you know to do and, and, and assume that, that it's going to take care of itself and you just focus on making the next play, what's important now. And even though there's an overwhelming amount of things that we might want to do, we have to say, what's what what do I really want? What's important? How do I simplify it? But you have to be goal-oriented, set goals but have a clear idea of why are you setting them and what do they mean to you and how can you be yourself in that? So that's a lot for anybody, but as a youth, if we can get to the point, somebody would have came to me when I was 10 or 11 and talked about that I had a masterpiece, that I had the ability to be self-aware and that I could regulate my thoughts, feelings and behaviors. And then I would have more self-control or self-mastery so that I'm responding to things instead of reacting to things. Or I'm reacting to things programmed in a way where I get the result I want. Like I'm like it becomes automatic that I'm loving or compassionate, or I see a challenge as a I see a crisis as a challenge. I see a mistake as an opportunity to learn something. That's so we need to reprogram ourselves and get back to our basic goodness and start to focus on assume the best and forget the rest and just focus on what we can control. How can we stay connected? So yeah, it's, it's like getting them before so that they can be coachable, teachable, and be self-responsible, uh, uh, mature adults, even though they're younger, but that we have to meet them where they are. And some of them is they have apathy because they don't see any way forward. So apathy, frustration, depression, those are low energy. Uh, vibes and we want to get people up to inspiration where they realize to courage where they're willing to do things and they're willing to not be part of a group and not have an individual sense of self to the degree that I am responsible and that I make choices and that I'm wise for success and it's okay for me to go for what I what I really want uh, you know to actually create a future that I want to live into some of us are fortunate we know we want to be doctors or lawyers or, or artists or whatever early on and then we just focus on it but a lot of us are just going through and there's so many changes it's very existentially like you have six choices but if you choose one you lose five so it's really confusing and what we have to do is is figure out okay that's true north and how do i keep making how do i create a process that allows me that when i get too far to the left i move back to the center and I get too far, but I'm moving towards true north and I know what true north is and I know where I am now. And if I know where I am now and I know what true north is, then I can plot a path forward to get there. So, so it's not like a formula. It's really more about what you do as an adult. It's just, you have to be clear about, you know, why are you here and who are you? And what do you want to achieve? And how do you want to spend your time? And so it's it's very existential of that. So now we're becoming, and if we don't know, then be on a journey and just try on this suit, try on that suit. You know, maybe you study liberal arts, you study everything, and then you pay attention to what your art is telling you. 
what you're inclined to or you know if you only had six months of what would you be doing or if you could choose if you had all the power and the ability to achieve what you want what do you want what would you go for what lights you up what makes you jump out of bed in the morning when you wake up yeah i love that question uh so okay so i'm gonna ask you one last question um, I want to be mindful of your time. And this is a question that Rosie often asks her guests um, at the very last. And we, we've talked about love. We've talked about radical love. And so the question is, sometimes Rosie asks this as a two-parter. And so I'll do that for you, George. And the first part of the question is, uh, what do you radically love? And the second part of the question is, how do you feel radically loved? Well, the first question, what do I radically love? To me, I, I love being in love. <laughs> right. I, I love the idea that I can speak about, uh, that, that I can help people help themselves. Uh, so I love releasing the divine spark or unlocking Post. That's what I radically love, that process of seeing when they unlock even just a little bit, how inspiring that is. And so, yeah, I love life. I love people. And I love learning. I, I'd say, well, average in a book a week, obviously, uh, the love of learning and learning to love is what I love. And the idea of uh, working for the highest good. There's something about knowing myself, to be myself, to express myself, to share myself. I I love that. I love all of it. So I just think my job is to be loving. You know, like, you know, it I it's just passed, Easter just passed. So I, I love what Jesus Christ taught, taught two things from my perspective, love everything and continual forgiveness. And, you know, the Dalai Lama, they asked him what was his uh, religion. He said, my religion is kindness. Mm -hmm. So it's something about getting beyond the illusion of separateness and feeling connected to myself and others to something greater than myself. That's, that, that's it. But I think love is all there is, all you need. Mm -hmm. So what I radically love, I love being loving and the process of being loved. So you talk about feeling love. So it's interesting because if you want love, you got to be love. So if I want to feel radically loved, I have to radically love. So is that too simple? No, I love that. <laughs> sometimes I think, I mean, you talked about reset, reboot, and just taking a step back. And sometimes I think it's the simplicity that is the answer. Um, and I love that answer. Thank you, George. Yeah, thank you. I had no idea I was going to say that, but that's <laughs> that's something about just being in the moment and trusting that that wisdom and that creativity that's inside will express itself. Yeah, yeah. Walk in, walk in the walk, talk in the talk. Uh, George, it's been such a pleasure speaking with you today. I cannot thank you enough for your time. And I'm curious, just one last logistical question. Uh, where can people go to find out more about you and follow? Yes. You? So they can go to my website, georgemumford.com. And, um, yeah. And the, and the book unlocked, they can uh, go to, I think Barnes and Noble, uh, Amazon, and you can pre-order and, and get a discount. Uh, you can get there. I have a YouTube channel, uh, George, where I do at home with George. But if you go to the website, there's a lot of different things. And it's interesting. One thing I learned years ago was that my friend, uh, he was teaching at, at a university, was Virginia Tech. And so he was teaching a writing and interviewing class. And so he had his class interview me. And what they, the first thing they did before they interviewed me is they Googled me. And I had no idea there was so much stuff on Google <laughs> that I've done over the years. So you can always go to Google, but the website is probably a good place to go. And, you know, I encourage that book, uh, Unlocked. Um, I read, I wrote that 
because a lot of times, even though the mindful athlete seeks to pure performance is good, people don't see themselves as an athlete. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to go a little bit deeper with my own personal story and and have people realize that everybody is, has the capacity to unlock. And that's why I wrote the, the book, Unlocked, Embrace Your Greatness, the Find the Flow, Discover Success. And I think that's something that everybody wants. Mm -hmm. and so, yeah, so they can, so that's it. Um, yeah, georgemonfort.com. And of course, if you Google me, you'll find all sorts of stuff. But the website's a great place to go. And obviously, Amazon or Bonds and & Noble and order the new book, that would be great. Perfect. Well, we'll make sure all of those links get into the show notes so people can easily find you and, and click links. Um, George, I hope you have a wonderful day. And thank you so much for being here. It's been a real pleasure speaking with you. Yeah, thank you. Well, I learned a lot today from you, believe it or not. Good. Yes, this is the people get cracked up. But yes, I learned from folks and it and you allow me to express myself in ways that allow me to get more and more. This is interesting. I wrote the book Unlock, but I'm, and I learned a lot, but that was at a certain pace. And now I feel like as I get out and talk about it, and we talk about radically, you know, radical, radical, radically loving or at the love podcast, that it gives me another perspective and it gives me an opportunity to share these ideas in new and exciting ways. So I want to thank you. You were amazing hosts for me today. And you created a listening that allowed me to express myself. And I want to thank you for that. Mm, that's such a, that really, I can feel that in my heart. So thank you so much for that compliment. It really means yes. a lot. You're welcome. And it's made my day. Oh, it's likewise. It's made my day. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. And